In the movies and on television, whenever the police are investigating some serious crime and they get as evidence a bit of blurry CCTV footage, they're always able to enhance it really well, aren't they? Uh, the policeman will say, can you freeze it there? Can you blow up that bit of the screen? And he'll turn to the, the, the geeky guy and the geeky guy will, will go -da 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 -da, really, really quickly on a, on a computer keyboard because that's what you do in order to enhance something. You go -da 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 -da, really quickly on the computer keyboard. If you've ever actually done anything on a computer using modern software, you'll know that what you actually do is you get a mouse and you go um, click, click, click. Oh, it hasn't done it. Um, oh, click. There we go. How's that? That's actually how it's done. But in the movies, it's always really, really quickly on the keyboard. And then a miracle happens. The, the picture from this blurry bit of low res CCTV footage suddenly becomes this amazing, spectacular high res. My goodness, it's him! Recognizable picture of a human being. And yet, does this actually reflect the reality in which we live? How many times, um, wherever you live, have the local police put out a photograph taken from a grainy bit of CCTV footage and have said, can anybody recognise this man? This criminal was spotted leaving this car park at a certain time on this camera. And, and then they get this, this yeah, he looks like a, a youngish guy. He's wearing a, a hooded top of some sort and he's got a face, but it's a bit of a blur. And they just, they fill the picture with this blurry picture. And that's the best they can do because that's actually the best they can do. If the police actually had things that could enhance pictures really well, don't you think they'd use them in reality whenever they're trying to catch someone? Why do you think they always put out these really, really grainy, low-res, poor pictures of, of suspects? It's because that's the best they can do. Now, some people might say, ah, oh, yeah, but in these movies, sometimes they're showing the, so the top FBI agents with all the latest stuff. Well, really, who do you think in the world would have the best picture enhancing software. I put it to you that it would be the film and television industry, wouldn't it? Um, and uh, all of the, the editing packages would boast that they've got really, really good enhancing software. Well, tell you what, let's, let's enhance this picture now. Let's go really big on, my, big on my face now. And this is what I look like when I am blown up really big, filling the whole picture. I'm sort of low res and blurry. Oh, can we enhance that? Well, aren't there sharpening tools? Yeah, okay, let's sharpen it and see what we get. Yep. This is what we get. It's it's not exactly marvelous, is it? It's 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 noisy, it's grainy, and it's pretty ugly, and it's still not anything like as sharp as the full picture. This is because, and this shouldn't really surprise anyone, a camera records at a certain resolution. It it, it looks at one pixel, decides what colour and brightness it should be, then at the next, and it keeps doing that until it builds up a whole picture. And it doesn't record any information in between. There is no information in between. It doesn't know what's happening between these dots. So if you just blow up the dots, you just get bigger dots, but not in the movies. Oh no, always with a satellite picture, they're able to just press this magic enhance button and suddenly they know exactly what they're looking at. Well, it's just not true. Now, I don't know if you've ever been behind the screen at a cinema, which I have. Um, and you may be behind the screen, this large piece of cloth and you'll be in the darkness and the auditorium perhaps has got the lights on and the people are coming in and sitting down in the seats. Now, if you just stand there and look at the back of the screen, you will see the back of the screen. You won't see a thing. But cinema screens are actually filled with lots and lots of little holes in the grid pattern all over them. There are two main reasons for this. Uh, one of them is to do with air pressure. Um, you know, cinemas usually have two sets of doors that act a bit like an airlock, but you can't be absolutely certain that they'll always be uh, one or the other will be closed. So sometimes both are open at the same time and there's a certain difference of pressure. Maybe the audience comes in and sits down and with the body heat heats up the room slightly or they, they breathe or something and that will change the pressure in the room. So you don't want the screen wafting backwards and forwards, uh, throwing the picture out of focus with the changes in pressure. But these changes will be quite gentle. So if you have loads and loads of tiny holes in the screen, then the air will be able to move through the screen gently and everything will stay in focus. That's one reason. Another reason is that they want a big sound system to blast sound through the center of the screen. They don't want to rely entirely on, on stereo sound from left and right. Uh, particularly, they want to put all the, the dialogue of the main characters in that center bit so that everyone in the cinema gets to hear what all the main characters are saying. So the dialogue is usually put uh, heavily in the center speakers. They want to blast that through the screen and it'll work a lot better if the screen's filled with loads of little holes. Now, if you focus on the back of the screen, you see the back of the screen. If you focus through the screen to where the people are in the auditorium beyond, you might see tiny little bits of movement as someone moves past that little hole, that little hole and so forth, but you won't make out a picture. But if you start at one end of the screen and walk the several yards behind the screen, looking 
through the screen at the audience as you do so, then, amazingly, you will suddenly see this bright, clear, consistent picture of the whole auditorium. Your brain is able to collect all the tiny bits of information from the movement of all those tiny uh, pixels, if you like, in, in the screen, and put them together to make a consistent picture. And you can, you can recognize your friends, you can see amazing detail as long as you keep moving. As soon as you stop, the picture disappears again. When uh, I cycle on Sundays to a local gaming club, I go past a cricket field, and the cricket field has loads of planks with little gaps in between. Now, if I, on my bike, if I stop and look at the fence, I see a fence. But if I focus through the fence as I'm cycling along, then shortly before I ran into the car in front, I can see a consistent picture of the cricketers playing cricket in the field. Now, if the human brain is able to put loads and loads of information from these moving images together to make a consistent image, then perhaps someone will work out how to do this in the future on computers. And perhaps uh, when you get that bit of grainy footage of someone walking out of the car park at night, the computer will be able to take the information of all the many pictures of that face and put them together and actually perhaps enhance it in a useful way. But we're not there yet. It hasn't happened. So let's look at a couple of actual examples from movies. Can you clean this up? All right, this is telly. Yeah, already doing it. And blow it up. Again. Oh, pull the other one. It looks high res when it's blown up eight feet yeah. across. That's a kid the cop shot. Oh, did, and did you hear that little bim, 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 bim noise as he was using it? Bim, bim. Who would ever want that? What computer program do you know where every time you, you enter some information, you type some, some words in or whatever, you get a little bim, 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 bim noise. The, the first thing you would do is, is go into settings and get rid of the annoying bim, 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 bim noise. And yet, this trope just doesn't seem to die. Still, computers in movies go whenever they're doing something. I wish they'd stop. Comedy walk. Beep, 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 beep. What are you doing? Looking at mum. Oh yeah, like that's the same shot. Look at every single hair on her head, pin sharp. Now you may think I'm overdoing it slightly, getting so annoyed at things which are not realistic in films, but I'm providing a service. I get annoyed so that you don't have to. I hope I can provide by my annoyance a little bit of calmness in your life. Beep 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 be